everybody, Cindy Otter here with my Artsy Endeavors. How are we doing today? Um, I'm doing pretty good. I apologize, I have not been doing my story and it's just because I've been working on so many other things, projects getting ready for 2017 and also uh, moving my art studio into a new location. Um, I'm still not completely moved in, but you know what, I've got to do some art today. So, I'm going to work on my story. Uh, the last chapter was chapter 8. And that is where we talked about depression and what depression is. Let me bring you out a little bit. There you go. Um, we talked about depression, what depression is. Um, we also talked about the fact that nobody likes to be there. It's a very difficult place to get out of. Um, and I'm hoping society is finally learning how to deal with um the mental illness of depression. So this was depression. Pretty nasty looking page. Okay, so now we're on to chapter nine. And chapter nine, I'm actually going to um, put quite a bit in this chapter because I want to move on from what is happening at this point into what I did to grow from this to learn from this, to accept this chronic pain, and to be able to wake up in the morning with a good attitude. So that's what we're going to do. But before I do that, I'm going to read another um, another article, or I'm not sure what you want to call it, chapter, um, from You Are Stronger Than You Know, Words of Hope and Encouragement for Someone Living with Chronic Illness. And this is a Blue Mountain uh, collection, Blue Mountain Arts collection. And this one is done by Taryn O'Brien, and it's the war inside my body. There is a war inside my body. My brain explodes with bombshells of pain. The fog of the front line never clears. My muscles fire their artilleries as the dictator feeds on them. My blood and my heart beat on and on, passing resources along the supply chain, hoping they are not stolen by the marauding, I cannot say that word, M-A-R-A-U-D-I-N-G, enemy. My immune system is under siege, surrounded and weakened day by day. But the dictator doesn't understand that if I weaken, so does he. The more he destroys, destroys, destroys. The dictator see, only sees the present. He wants to survive now to see his children flourish in a ripe and supple landscape that shrivels and decays the longer he resides here. Me, my own muscles, my brain, my blood, overrun and oppressed, subdued and subjected. This war is painfully intense, and it feels as if victory will surely be his. But I will fight for freedom, so that verdant things, healthy things, fertile things, grow in my heart, my flesh, my mind once more. Someday, I will run along the pathways of the earth, and my imagination will fly amongst starlit skies, and the war inside my body will be no more. Now, this talks about the war inside my body. This also, it, you know, your body from the neck down. Uh, but it also includes the war on your mind. And when it says here, this war is painfully intense and if it feels that victory will surely be his, that is the depression, the anger, the worthlessness, the sadness, the um, complete feeling of being an utter failure okay that is what this talks about I love the fact that it says I will fight for freedom and that's exactly what we're gonna do but before we get into that I want to give you an update on where I'm at in um, this chapter we're gonna talk about what's been going on we're gonna talk about the emotions um, we're still gonna have the anger and the depression uh, we're going to talk about being scared. There's there's a whole lot in this. So let me get some supplies out. I want to get some paint, maybe some collage. Let's just play around with this page and, and we will chat while we're doing it. I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing we're going to use is some... I don't know if you've ever seen this before. I have never seen it, but I found it this last weekend. Uh, last week when I was with my hubby. We spent a day together and we went a few different places and that's gray gesso. I am so excited. I can't wait to use this. So I'm going to use it. And we're going to see how well it works. 
and uh, we're going to play with it. All right? So let me grab a brush. This one will work. Oh, this is smooth. I wonder if I add a little bit of water to it. Yeah. I just added a little bit of water to it because I wanted to put it on not quite so thick. So it's okay. All right, so where are we in my story? Oh, chapter nine. Let me tell you, the emotions are still running strong. We're actually only into probably the fourth month, fifth month maybe, fourth month of this happening to me. And it has been just um, honestly just hell. It has been so difficult for me to look for positive because it just seems like nobody really cares. Nobody could give a crap that I'm in so much pain that I just want to curl up in a ball and cry and, and never see daylight again, you know. So it's very difficult. And I'm not saying that at all, any in, you know, in any way, shape, or form about my spouse. He... He has been my rock from day one. He understands. He knows me. He knows the pain I'm in. And he sees. I really like this gray. Just so you know, I really, really like this gray. Um, but, you know, he's there. He's there for me. He knows. He understands. He gets it. So, um, my fight is with all, everybody else. The doctor's offices. The employer. The insurance companies. The physical therapist. The... Um, doctor that wants to do shots everybody so at this point I'm not fixed it it feels like I'm still at the point where nobody could care um, I'm still having to do all the follow-up on all of the calls all of the paperwork the whole nine yards that doesn't change pretty much throughout this entire thing I if somebody wants something or needs something for a purpose whether it be insurance company employer for um, you know, absence, any of that, if I don't follow up on it, it doesn't happen. So, um, I like this gesso. Uh, it's very thick. It's a really thick gesso. So I'm finding just adding a touch of water to it makes it just a touch creamy. So I actually may just spray some water in the gesso tin, in the gesso jar, bottle, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so... So like I said, I'm not fixed. It feels like nobody cares. And one of the major things that's going on in my brain is the question of why. Why did this happen to me? Well, you know as well as I do, we're never going to get that answer. Some people say things happen for a reason. Um, other people say, well, you should have known. Why would you pick it up? Um, there's a lot of, you know, why? Why did this happen? What, what, what did I do so wrong? I was doing my job. I wasn't thinking, which there's my why. I wasn't thinking and I picked it up the way I, sh you know, the way I should not have picked it up or I picked it up and it, it just, I should not have picked up that router. So that's my why. Okay. Uh, let me dry this up. We'll be right back. All right. So these are the colors I'm going to play around with on this gray. I've got, these are all Dean Wakeley's. I have lime, sky, tangerine, and lemon. So we're just going to play around with these colors. And I have a little piece of uh, packaging here that I, I don't know, I've been using for a palette. So it works. Okay. There's some lime and I want some lemon. Put these side by side because, <gasps> where'd my, whoop, 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 hold on. I don't know where they went. I've got to find them. But anyways, um, let's just play with this to start. What I want to do is I just want to... That's not what I wanted. Here we go. Let's start with this one. All right. So where we're at. Um, my employer was contacted. Oh, I wonder if this is... Oh, you know what I can do? <laughs> like it. Good idea, Cindy. Good idea. Yeah. 
All right, we're going to do one page at a time. So I'm going to start on this page here. I like the fact that I can... I'm just going to work over this stencil. So my contact, my employer was contacted, and they were asked about light duty. My boss informed them that there is no light duty, and that... Um, you know, I can't come back into work. I either need to do my job or not. And like I've told you guys before, my job included a lot of travel. I spent many, 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 many miles in a vehicle um, going from place to place. So it's not like, you know, I was sitting at a computer desk all day, every day. Um, I was required to go out into the field and to go to different offices and that sort of thing. So there was no light duty. And to be honest with you, at this point, I don't think I could have done light duty if there was light duty. I was in so much pain. And, you know, I can't say was. I still am. But I've learned how to handle that pain a little bit differently than when I first got it. Anybody that's in chronic pain will tell you the same thing. It, it sounds funny to other people, but when we say, oh, man, I can't wait to get back to my normal pain level. It's true. We, there is a normal pain level for us. Um... And it's nice to get back to it when, once it's been escalated. It, it's very difficult when it escalates because it's high enough to begin with. So um, that's just a little heads up on the chronic pain awareness, I could say. I'm just going to clean off my brayer here. I like this. I like this gray. I'm going to be using this more just to play with and see what I can do on the gray. Um, this is another stencil here. This one is by Stencil Girl Products, and it's an S107. So I'm just going to take some of this. So, okay, no light duty. Uh, I'm still fighting everybody and ev for everything. I have to keep following up with disability. I have to keep following up um, disability meaning from my job. I have to keep following up to make sure that all the paperwork has been put in so that, you know, I continue to get a certain amount of pay, that sort of thing. Uh, where I'm at as far as what I'm using medically, um, a TENS unit, which I rock my TENS unit 90% of the time because it does help keep the muscle spasms at bay. Uh, the muscle spasms can tend to put you on the ground fast. And if anybody's ever had muscle spasms, they, they'll get it. They'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. So my TENS unit is my friend. <clears throat> um, medications, muscle relaxers. Um, at this point, they did not have me on any painkillers. Today, I am on painkillers because it just gets to the point where it's too much. And you just can't do it anymore. As far as... What are we going to do for the future? We're looking at, right now, injections. They want to do, um, what do you call them, steroid injections. And they want to try those to see if they can get the pain to lessen. There are a lot of people that have um, back issues like I do that can have the injections, the spinal cord injections. Um, and they help. It, it relieves some of the pain. Unfortunately, I went through many, and I mean many, I don't know, I actually lost track of the count, but I went through many, many, many injections and they did not work. Um, the very first one worked for two days. After two days, I was right back in the same pain level. The second one worked until I got out to my vehicle um, the third one, um, if I remember right, did not work. I, I wasn't even off the table, and it was already ramping back up again. So that was the first three that I remember. After that, we kept trying until Cindy said, I'm done. I'm not a pincushion. I'm tired of being one. Uh, we're not trying anymore. The, the shots themselves were enough pain along with what I already had. I didn't know. I don't want any more. Uh, the last one I do remember that actually made me make this decision was when they did a caudal epidural. 
and let me tell you that's basically where they go up by your tailbone um, and do the injection up up your tailbone oh my god um, no never again I'm done so the injections are done I said no nope, I'm not gonna do it uh, I'm still in the depression I still feel worthless I feel forgotten I feel like there's absolutely no hope for pain relief it didn't matter what I did at this point I hurt more uh, whether it was you know to do dishes or do laundry or sit on a couch it hurt I just it, it didn't matter what I did the pain was just boom right there in my face uh, let me dry this up I'll be right back all right I've decided I want a little bit of orange so I got out my dilution um, squeezed orange spray and I'm just gonna this is shattered glass I think is the name of this and I just want uh -huh, a little bit And I don't want that much, so I'm just going to roll some of it off. Yeah, that's what I want right there. This one we can put down. Putting on the negative. Okay, we're going to roll that off. I don't want all of it on there. Perfect. I'll stick this in here. Clean it off. done. Okay. I like it. You know what? I might put some yellow on here. Let me grab my yellow. Uh, this is pure sunshine. My pure sunshine's almost gone. Let's see if we can put some pure sunshine in here. It's almost gone. Hang on. What I'm doing, um, and I don't recommend you do this all the time, but I just put a little bit of water in there because I just want the color. So, come on. Come on, Mama. Maybe, maybe not. Urgh. I think that sprayer is shot. Yeah, it is. Let me grab another one. Okay, it took me a second to get it going, but we got her going. So, some yellow there. 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 It's okay that it's a little bit goopy because I'm going to end up going over it with a towel anyways. Some there. Some there. All right. Just going to go over it with a towel just to give it that kind of like a, sh almost like a shadow of the ink all right so that's done back to where I'm at all right what do I feel like we talked about that worthless um, as this continues and I keep you know uh, going to doctors and and they don't automatically want to take me into surgery and fix things and whatever we have to try all this I feel like people are starting to look at me like I'm nuts meaning you can't be in that much pain. What's wrong with you? Well, unfortunately, I am. I am in that much pain. I want to just kind of take this blue and green that I've got left over here on my palette. I just want to go around the outside of the pages here. So, I'm, you know, I'm starting to feel like people are thinking I'm crazy. Uh, that's, that's the easiest way to put it. And, I mean, I'm going to put it right out there. That's what I felt like. And... You know, so you try to you try to explain your pain, and people just kind of look at you. You know, like a dog looks at you with a cocked head, like, huh? And there's there's nothing you can do about it. It's just the way it is. So, not only that, I'm exhausted. I'm not sleeping. The pain is so difficult that it is so hard to go in and just go to sleep. That doesn't happen. Um, so I'm exhausted. Being exhausted, my moods are going up and down like crazy. Um, that's just, again, part of the chronic pain journey. Uh, when you hurt, it gets to you. It mentally gets to you. You just, 
you want to bite at anything and growl at anything and everybody that comes near you. And that's just the way the chronic pain works in your mind. Um, I did my caudal epidural. Done. Not doing it again. Well, here's where the company starts sending me to their independent, independent medical exam, exams, IMEs. And when they do this, I'll be, independent medical evaluation, I apologize. And I'll be honest with you, what I call them when I went was quacks. They were a joke. They were just plain, they don't want to hear you speak at all. They ask you certain questions and only the answer, yes, no, you know, black or white, because they don't want to hear anything else. That's not what they're there for. They are there for the company that you work for, for their insurance company, hoping they can say, well, you don't have any issues, so we don't have to pay you. All right? I don't know how many appointments I had with the independent medical evaluations. A lot. Every time I went in, it was the same exact thing. Every time the report went to the company, the insurance company, it was the same exact thing. I had issues. I have issues. I have pain. <laughs> okay. Um, why I kept going, no idea. Uh, a couple things that I did to try to help is I started going to the pool at our local YWCA. And when I had my first back surgery, I was actually, I went through and I did aquatic therapy. And what that was is I went to the pool and I learned different exercises to do um, to help me heal with my back. I learned, um, you know, different things to do in the water to help strengthen my core, which when you have a strong core, you have a stronger back. So I went to the pool on my own dime. Let me tell you, it's not cheap. It's like 200 and some dollars for a season. And started doing, walk in the pool, um, doing the exercises that I knew how to do. And the only thing it did, to be outright and honest, is it caused more pain. I, I just, I would come home from the pool completely exhausted and just hurting like crazy. So, yeah, the pool was out. We didn't do that. I did it for, actually, I did it for quite a while. Trying, hope, thinking that, trying and hoping and thinking that if I just kept going, um, that I would get better and it wouldn't hurt so much. Well, that didn't work. All right, I need to get some other supplies out, figure out where I'm going with this page, and I'll be right back. All right, so I got a few things out here that I'm just gonna play around with. I honestly still have no idea where I'm going with this page, but it's okay, it's all good. Okay, so one of the lovely things I get to do during this whole mess is go to the workers' comp doctor, or yeah, workers' comp doctor, every 90 days. This is, um, not to change the subject, but this is just an old report that I found on typewriter paper. I don't even know where I found this. I think in a, uh, like a thrift shop. And I thought it was cool, so I brought it home and played with some paint on it. And now I'm cutting out some ink splats. Um, and I'm just cutting them out splats because that's where I feel like my life is going at this point. It's just splatting into a mess every time I have to go follow up on something or check something or make sure the paperwork's in or any of that crazy stuff. So... I thought splats was a good idea. This is not easy paper, just so you know, to use in the punch because it's very, very thin. But we can get a few good ones out of here, right? All right, so I'm still at home. Everybody else gets up and goes off to the jobs and I'm at home just trying to figure out what to do with my time that doesn't hurt trying to figure out you know what am I gonna do what happens if I can't you know it starts it starts entering in your mind what happens if I can't go back to work what am I gonna do not just financially mentally um, health wise how am I gonna live with this pain I don't know. Come on, you. 
get back here. See, the, like I said, this this paper is very difficult to do this with. We may end up with just three because I don't know how long I want to sit here and fight this. Oh, heck. We'll do three and a half. We'll do a half one there. If I can get it halfway in, I'm good. There we go. Halfway in. Uh, make it three quarters. Perfect. Okay. So... All of this wears on you um, when you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. You're trying to figure out how you're going to live. Um, this is just regular glue that I got on clearance, probably at Hobby Lobby or yeah, most likely Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to use that just to put these splats down. Um, <clears throat> so we're figuring, we're, you know, I'm trying to figure out. I'm chatting with my husband and we're both going, uh-oh, what happens if... What are we going to do? How's this going to work? How are we going to pay our bills? So all of that is going through the mind, as well as the pain, as well as fighting with all the workers' comp stuff, um, as well as, you know, trying to continue living life, which does not work. It's not, you cannot live a normal life the same way you do in chronic pain that you do without chronic pain. It's just not possible. Um, you may have people say, oh, suck it up and you know, you can do it. Just that's going to hurt a little. Well, yeah, no. When you live with this much pain 24 seven, it doesn't just hurt a little. It never goes away. I am going to dry those up and then Actually, before I do that, let's do this. Before I put you guys on hold, let's take, I've got some black gesso here. And on this page, this is the page I plan to do my journaling. I'm not really sure, I still don't know where this page is going, but it's okay. We don't have to know. Um, I still plan on doing my journaling. So what I'm going to do is I have this stencil here. Can you see it? Well, you'll see it when I stencil it. Um, it's got these, it's a Fiskars, I don't know what you call them, dew drops, deer drops, I don't know. But I like them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to strategically place these. Got one there. Got one here. And I'm not doing them real dark. I don't need them really dark. Put, uh, we'll go here. One here. And we're gonna go a couple more. And again, I don't want them real dark. So I'm going into my paint over here. <clears throat> if you don't want it real dark, I went into my paint and then I'm just getting rid of a lot of the excess paint. So we're gonna put one right here. Little parts of it's dark, that's fine. Yeah, you know I'm going to put one here. Actually, I'm going to go like this so it actually goes off the page. One there. I'm going to put the tip of one here. And one more right here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do over here. I don't want to use that same stencil, so I'm going to use something different. I have a couple more out over here. And with this stencil, I'm going to, oop, it's still wet. Let me dry this. I'll be right back. All right, so I dried those up at least so when I put my hand down, I don't stick to them. I'm going to put these arrows on here because... I always feel like I'm coming and going. When it comes to this workers' comp stuff, you're up and you're down, and you're up and you're down, and it's just crazy. Now, while all this is going on, um, my attorney advised me to apply for Social Security Disability. And I said to him, why? I'm going back to work. They're going to fix me. I'm going back to work. And he said to me again, he says, Cindy, you really need to just apply. It takes a long time. And I'm like, yeah, but... He goes, don't worry about it. Just apply. All right, so fine. We applied. Um, you know, and I'm thinking that doesn't matter because I'm going back to work. Well, you know, what do I need Social Security Disability for? 
So all of this is going on. They decide, they put me on a nerve medication, which um, I have depression. I have um, actually, I was diagnosed with bipolar, um, a.k.a. manic depression, many, many years ago. So I have depression. And let me tell you, this didn't help. Um, with the depression, there are certain medications that you can't take. When you take them, they affect the medications that you're on, and it's not a good thing. So... When they put me on, first we to put me on gabapentin, which that medication is just awful. Number one, you blow up like a big balloon in a matter of minutes, I think, when you take your first pill. Um, <clears throat> and secondly, it was messing with my depression medication. So I had to go and get my depression medication um, re... What's the word I'm looking for? I had to get it revised because it wasn't working and it was getting worse and needless to say the gabapentin didn't do much of anything so they took me off that and they put me on Lyrica okay Lyrica is a nerve medication again it messes with the depression medication so that didn't work so not only am I you know dealing with this chronic pain I'm, I'm so frustrated because everything we try is messing something else up and it's just not going right so, all right, before I do any more on this page, I'm going to come back over here um, and just let you guys know what I'm doing. This is another punch that I have. It's a little mason jar. And I used this same paper, um, this typewriter paper. I had another place on it. And I cut out these little jars. And what I want to do, these little jars are going to be placed around on these little drops. And then I am going to do some journaling in these little jars. So I need a couple more. <clears throat> so up and down with medications. We're trying them. They don't work. This one doesn't work. Let's try that one. Oh, maybe we should go back to this one. Up and down. Just crazy. Um, you know, they're not working. I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated, I'm hurting, I just want to get better, and none of this works. So now I'm also going to, <clears throat> they want me to do more injections, no, I'm done. No more injections, I can't do that anymore, it's not going to happen. I've had enough. I'm tired of being a guinea pig, and that's what I felt like. I felt like, oh, well, you know, we, we can't guarantee we get it in the right spot, so let's try another spot. Well, you know, those injections, I'm not saying they're extremely painful, except for the caudal epidural. That thing is nasty. But for the, you know, the other injections, it's not that there's so much pain. It's the fact that I'm tired of feeling like a pincushion. Try this, try that, try this, try that. No. I'm done trying things. I don't want to try anything else, right? So I want to put these down. And of course, I put my my paintbrush in the uh, water already. So we're going to get another one. I'll use that one. That's a good one. Ah, get another brush here. All right, this will work. So, um, anyways, on top of that, you know, we're doing the medication. They want me to go to a chiropractor. All right. Well, you know, first of all, should I be seeing a chiropractor because I did have prior surgery? It's okay. There's no problem. They, they'll, they'll work with that. Okay. So we go see a chiropractor. The first thing the chiropractor does to me is what he called a Graston soft tissue. Holy mother. Crap. It, he used this thing to like scrape down my back. Oh my God, it hurt so bad. I left there in tears. Um, nip, we're not doing that again. I'm sorry, I don't care. No way, no how are you doing that to my body again. It was awful. Um, I don't know what, at this point I don't remember because we're talking four years ago. I don't know what the purpose was of it to have it done that way but I can tell you whatever it was it didn't work and I'm not doing that again so the chiropractor released me and said no no further I, there's nothing more I can do for you so chiropractor's out 
they talk about acupuncture at this point I am so fed up with needles I don't care acupuncture uh, Novocaine uh, steroids I don't care what the needle is I'm done I, I don't want anything to do with it so I was like no not happening you know yes I want to get out of pain but you know what I, it's my body and I'm tired of being invaded you know I feel so bad for these people that deal with cancer and have to have all these tests done and I mean really it's just horrible there's so much that I don't know it's just not nice anyways um so the chiropractor's done I'm not doing any more injections so they send me to get a nerve conduction study done all right we go get the nerve construction con nerve conduction study what's it show it shows I have nerve damage in my left leg okay and this is about I want to say February March of the following year so we're talking six months later so yes I have nerve damage um, what are we gonna do to fix it again where they talked about all the drugs and stuff yeah it doesn't work so let's see what's next um, I keep doing the same paperwork 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 so at this point um, they decide to send me to another pain management specialist and this is actually a pain management therapy program and I will tell you it was one of the best programs I have ever um, been in as far as pain management and the reason is what they did is they in this pain pain management course it was 20 weeks it was four hours once a week for 20 weeks and the first thing we did um, it's it was myself and a psychologist and several other patients and depending on what day of the week you went you would be in with different people and it was all about pain management everybody was different it wasn't like everybody started out on day one and finished on week 20 um, they may have been going for six weeks or it, it just you join in okay and with this pain management program um, what was so wonderful about it is number one you went in you walked in you sat down and it's like oh my gosh these people get it they get what I'm feeling they get what I'm saying they understand can you believe it they you know it's it's like oh my gosh <laughs> right so and I'll explain these words that I'm putting on here in a minute so I was just floored so the first thing we do is we sit down at this um, pain management course and we do a a group counseling so we talk about issues you know what's going on how are you feeling um, you know what obstacle are you trying to get over what are the emotions that go with the obstacle you know what it what exactly is going on in your life and we would actually be able to help each other um, for example um, doing dishes I made the comment I said well I said it's getting really really difficult to do the dishes and I said what I have to do is I have to do them a little at a time I can't just stand there and do all the dishes I have to stand there do a few dishes walk away go sit down let my back chill out um, and then come back later on finish up the dishes yeah you got to reheat the water and stuff but that's just the way it is and to be able to sit in this room with like-minded people that are going through the same thing they're like oh my god I do the same thing we talked about making dinners and you have to learn when you live in chronic pain you can't do things the way you used to it just does not work you have to take and cut them down into little steps so for example making a dinner okay I'm gonna have salad tonight let's get the tossed salad together in the morning put it in the fridge that's part of dinner um, I need to you know I'm gonna bake some potatoes let's get the potatoes out get them you know washed off get them wrapped up in a little foil ready to go all right um, you have to do it step by step you can't expect expect to walk into a kitchen spend an hour there preparing a meal 
and turn around and walk back out. It doesn't work like that in chronic pain. So let me dry this up real quick. We're going to come back and I'm going to tell you why I put those words on here. And we're going to do a little bit of journaling. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. So like I said, we, you, you learn when you have chronic pain that you have to do things differently. Um, and I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm, I'm getting excited about it. I'm very passionate about this because if I had known the things I know now, back then, it would have made my life so much easier. But I didn't know. It was brand new to me. Um, so just another example. We talked about dinner. We talked about doing the dishes. All right, uh, cleaning my house. Normally, I would get up in the morning, probably on a Saturday morning. I would go through the house. I'd vacuum the whole way through. I'd have laundry going. I'd change the beds, you know. All of that, that doesn't happen like that anymore. Now, I vacuum a room or two, depending on how I feel that day. If I'm feeling really good or if, you know, I'm having a lot of pain, it depends. It just depends on what gets done. The beds, I try, I still try to change them together. Some days I can't. And that's okay. It, that's just the way it is. Okay? Um, that's how you live with chronic pain. Now, like I said, by all of this, and I'm going to doodle some more on these pages just so you guys know. I'm probably not going to doodle the whole thing while I'm sitting here. You guys will go crazy just being bored watching me. But I'm trying to decide if I want to cut that off or not. I'm going to say no. It's going to stay there for right now. Um, so this, this, anyways, this pain management group really opened my eyes. And what I did is I asked my, um, the leader of the group, I said, may I please bring my husband to one of these? You know, concerned about, you know, the confidentiality of other patients, that kind of thing. And she said, yeah. So I brought him with me. Now, I didn't tell you the whole program. What we did is we had a group counseling. Then we did a relaxation, which is a biofeedback relaxation. Then we had individual counseling, and then we did another biofeedback. And that was the way that um, they were run. So, anyways, I brought my husband in, and we, again, just sat there talking in the individual um, counseling. And we talked about it after um, we left that day, and he said that it was wonderful to go to because. He heard other people saying the same things that I had been saying all along. You know, it hurts, this is the pain, this is what I feel. He heard it through other patients. So I don't want to say it was a validation, but it was a validation that, you know, what I was saying, this is what's happening, okay? I'm not saying he didn't believe me because my husband believes me. He, he knows me well enough to know. Um, that when I'm in pain, I'm in pain, and it also shows. Um, I will get very moody, especially if the pain is really high. Um, he knows, you know, he, we've been together so long, he understands, and he knows how I am. So anyways, um, if you can get your spouse, if you have any type of a program where you're in with like-minded people, and you can get your spouse to go talk to the doctor or the, you know, the coordinator first. Make sure that it's okay. But if you can get your spouse or your significant other to go with you, it's huge. Because it actually opens up their eyes and they may understand a little bit more. Okay. So anyways, we did this. I did this 20-week program. Um, you know, they teach you. You learn how to do other uh, types of pain management, you know, um, ice, heat, take a walk, um, stretches, meditation was huge, meditation was a really big one, um, just different ways for you to, I don't want to say get out of your head, but get out of your head, get away from that pain get away from all of those sensations. It's not that the pain goes away, but you're focusing more on something else than you are the actual pain. And that's huge because 
if you can focus on something else, even if it's for three minutes, that's three minutes that you didn't have to deal with that pain. And in a world of chronic pain, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. So if you get three minutes, take it. Okay. Um, let's see, what else? What else can I tell you? Because like I said, I really don't want to keep going through the chapters of, oh my God, this is what happened. This is how I felt. Um, because a lot of it is the same feelings over and over and over. Um, you're just, you are so fed up, confused, hurt, sad, angry, depressed, um, you're in denial, you are, just trying to think, you are just, you're baffled at what is happening. And it is just not, 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 not easy. These words I put on here because these were things that I learned in that pain management course. Number one is to be kind to yourself. Treat yourself the way you would treat your best friend. Now think about that. Would you tell your best friend, if your best friend was having a bad day, would you say, well, suck it up and move on? Or would you say, oh, man, I'm really sorry, but, you know, my thoughts are with you. Why don't you, um, you know, take time out and or call in dinner tonight or what can I do for you? How would you treat your friend? You would be kind to them. So you have to do that to yourself. This is huge. You can get through this. You don't think so. You really wonder at times. But you can. You're strong enough. Okay, we are only given what we can handle. Sometimes it takes us, takes us to the edge, to the brink, but we can handle it. So you're strong. You can do this. You have to be strong in order to do it. This doesn't mean that if you feel like sitting down and bawling, sit down and bawl. Sometimes the best thing we can do is release those emotions. Um, but you have to be strong. You cannot give up. Okay, relax. This is one of the things I learned in the pain management is to relax. And the reason they say to relax is think about it. When you don't relax, what happens? All of your muscles tense, right? So that's one of the big things you have to learn how to do is relax. Okay, these over here, I am actually going to put my own personal journal journaling in, and it's going to be about the things that I've talked about today. It's going to be about, um, you know, the pain management course. And, you know, that, I don't know if there's any program around you like that, but look into it. See if you have a, a, pain, a pain management program that, teaches you how to deal with the daily day-to-day -day, oh my god how am I going to deal with this pain today okay um, using meditation using relaxation techniques it doesn't have to be specifically a meditation um, you can sit and just close your eyes and focus on your breath you know yeah that's meditation but you know it doesn't sound like it's a Buddha Zen thing um, just sit and focus on your breath and Physically let your muscles relax. Let the tension out. Just by focusing on the breath, you can do that. All right. So look in your area. See what kind of programs are available. Stick with the paperwork. Don't give up on the paperwork. Do not give up. I hope by now you've got the biggest message that I had, which was get yourself an attorney. They do wonders. All right, just so you know, um, it's a good thing I did apply for that Social Security disability. And I went in front of a judge after um, a first denial, and I was approved. So listen to what your attorney tells you. If he wants you to jump through a hoop, ask him if he can keep it down on the ground so you don't have to jump so high. <laughs> just, you know, do what they ask you to do. They're there to help you. Okay, so this is my message for this month, or I should say for this chapter. 
is, you know, be kind, stay strong. You can do this. Take a deep breath and relax. Now, my next chapter, which is chapter 10, I'm going to look and see if there's anything really more important that I need to put in here. If not, then what we're going to do is we're going to start working on how I now wake up in the morning with a good attitude, pain or no pain. I'm going to show you what art has done for me for the pain, in dealing with the pain. And I'm going to show you where I started with the art that has helped me so much with the chronic pain. Right? So when you see this book again, you're going to see some journaling in here. I'm going to journal in white pen. I don't know as it's going to be legible to you, which is fine. It doesn't matter. Um, but I'm going to do some journaling on this page. This is, this is where it's going to be. This is where it's at. We're going to leave it right there. So as always, be kind. Have fun. That's what life's all about. Yeah, pain sucks, but you know what? You got to have, you got to have fun. If you don't have fun, what's the purpose, right? So have fun. That's what life's all about. Happy creating. Take it easy. Stay strong. And we'll be back to you with our next Chapter 10. Take care, everybody. Bye.